magical because you're in I don't even... now being broadcast all over the world. Awesome. Really? No, it's not. He's being silly, uh, I think. I don't know. Okay, are you ready? You're rolling. Welcome to the Hero's Journey Dream Oracle Masterclass. That's what we're calling this. All With, right. I'm Kelly Sullivan Walden, a.k.a. Dr. Dream, and this is Rasuli, master fusion artist, living legend, and we are in his studio. And it's such a blessing and a pleasure. And I, um, so basically what I want to do today is I want to talk about the hero's journey and dreams and explore the different stages because you have a completely different life experience, many life experiences that you've brought into, into your journey. I've got my own experiences and yet the hero's journey, the thing that Joseph Campbell has brought forward, we love Joseph Campbell props to Joseph Campbell. He made it famous. He, um, for those of you who aren't familiar with the hero's journey, we're going to get into the 12 stages of it, but basically Joseph Campbell talks about it in, um, hero with a thousand faces and, and it became really popular after the movie star Wars came out. He, when he was consulted, George Lucas consulted him on the 12 stages of the hero's journey for his character Luke Skywalker in the movie Star Wars. And because it was so successful, people use it as this template for how to tell a great story. And it resonates so much because it turns out all of us humans are heroes on a hero's journey. And we're all here to play out something that is epic. I mean, we're on planet Earth, for God's sakes. When in the middle of the cosmos on a, on a on an earth that is spinning through space at hundreds of thousands of miles a minute. And the fact that we're sitting here, it's a miracle. We're heroes. Right, Rasuli? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> just, just being formed in our mother's womb was, we were the heroes. It's, there's so many things that could have gone wrong. Right. right. I mean, to even get past the first trimester, it's like, and then when a baby's born, it's like, oh my God. Yeah. And then there's each year, each breath. Yeah. In my case, something went wrong and I was born. <laughs> something, wait, wait, wait. Okay, something went, something went very right. But I know that you, let's just, we're going to do a little personal and then we'll get kind of overview about each of the stages. But I just want, one of the things that you shared with me a while ago was I, your mother was in a swimming pool when she was pregnant with you and there was lightning and rain, and lightning hit the water with your mom uh, pregnant. And fire, it just came up, the fire. Just okay, so, yeah. so what happened? Um, nothing, she had this, this dream and she got really frightened. And um, there was this holy man in our neighborhood that uh, was like a psychologist of the neighborhood mm. in those times. And, uh, and he was blind. So my mother uh, went to him and told him, because she was really worried about this dream, that she was in the pool and the fire came. A fire yeah. in the pool, like lightning? Yeah, the lightning hit the pool and then the fire just came out. So she got really frightened and asked the, you know, the holy man that what this means. And the holy man told her that she was pregnant and she was gonna give birth to a son who is gonna go across the ocean and he's gonna be representing light. And this was something, she didn't even know that she was pregnant. Wow. When she found out that she was pregnant and I was born, she treated me different than my sister and brother because she felt like I was special. Her feeling that I'm special was what was driving me mm. into a different level. To have to prove her right. To just, you know, her, her treatment of mine was what really put me in a different level. I had my own room where my sister and brother had, they had to share the room. I had, you know, paint and whatever I wanted, she would buy for me. So this sort of developed in me as the idea that my mother was indirectly 
connecting it to my subconsciousness. So it was building inside me into this idea. And interestingly enough, um, the very first book that I read was Don Quixote. Mm. Oh, that imprinted you. Yeah, and Don Quixote became the hero that I wanted to follow because he just wanted to be different for, from everybody. You know, somebody in the 17th century wanted to be a knight <laughs> instead of being in the 12th century or 13th century. And, and that became my idol. Still, Don Quixote is my idol. You see his yes. statue everywhere, his paintings. I've done so many paintings of Don Quixote and drawings. Um, that was the first book that I read, wow. and I fell in love with Don Quixote. The idea of hero's journey was building up in me. And then, all of a sudden, I got a hold of Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn. Wow. And that did it to me. <laughs> Just getting on the raft and going down Mississippi River was the idea that I was just adoring. I want to go places where I have no idea I'm going. And that built up in me, and that's what really got me to come to America. I still paint without knowing what I'm doing because I want to look at the painting when it's finished, and the painting tells me where I'm going. It's not me telling the painting to go there or here. So the painting is really what tells me my journey, every painting takes me to the next level and next level because I paint through my feeling, my subconsciousness. So next day when I look at the painting, while I'm doing it, I'm usually sitting close to the painting and doing it. And I'm not even seeing what I'm painting, I'm just play, playing around. But next day when I look at it, then the painting starts talking to me. And if it doesn't, I turn it around and many times painting talks to me upside down or sideways. And that's how all these paintings in the hero's journey have been developed. Mm. It's just that subconscious, subconsciousness is taking the journey into the unknown. And when I reach that unknown, the painting is coming on the canvas. And that is when the hero reaches something new and then my finishing the painting and exhibiting it is when I come back with the with what I have I have carried. So ah. that's my journey. Actually, the hero's journey is I don't consider myself a hero, but I consider myself um, a wayfarer. I consider you a journey. But I'm a just hero. a wayfarer <laughs> because I'm in search of right. finding things that I'm not used to. One of the things, so I think we'll weave in and out in all of this, but I, I want you all in this class to not just learn about the hero's journey and not just learn something about dreams, but to me, Rasuli is not just a painter, an artist that has done these gorgeous cards. This is the deck right here and here's the cards. We'll be playing with them throughout this thing. Here's some of the cards. Ta -da -da -da. Anyway, he's, there's, there's an energy that you bring and I think the energy transmits into these images and into the entire thing that I want people to, to feel and hear because to me, there's, there's, we're all on a hero's journey. We're on, in some way, there's like the macro and there's the micro. Our entire lives are one big hero's journey from birth, from pre-birth till after death. There is no death, but we'll just call it that. And then there's many hero's journeys throughout. Like every day is its own hero's journey. Every dream is its own hero's journey. Every meeting, every time I come here, there's a hero, there's many hero's journeys. You might get, you might be up for a promotion at work and you're on a hero's journey to get that promotion, or you might be in a, in a health challenge and you're on a particular stage of your hero's journey but there's the there's the there's the hard way to do the hero's journey because you're on it whether you like it or not and then there's the joyous way there's the juicy way and 
why I am attracted and drawn to be with you and to work with you and be fortunate to get to be in your circle is I feel like when I'm with you, my journey, it becomes more magical. It becomes less difficult because, and this is kind of like the shortcut, the sneaky shortcut. My grandma Sullivan, God rest her soul, she died a year ago, a year and a half ago. She was always looking, she would always say, what's the sneaky shortcut? Dreaming how